Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now today's video is going to be a selection of highlight clips from the past couple of days of the Great One Red Deer grind here on Quattro Kalinas. Now I have to start off with this clip as it is the only non-Red Deer clip in this entire video and as you can see we are looking at an absolutely huge level 3 roe deer. He is a guaranteed diamond with that minimum estimate of 81 and he goes all the way up on his estimate to 93. So I had good hopes that this guy could potentially be my biggest diamond roe deer ever. And he really does look impressive. I'm just trying to get him to go broadside here so that I can make sure that I'm making a good shot on him with this 243. But just look at the size of him. That is a seriously impressive looking roebuck. And I have been picking off occasional roebucks sort of as opportunistic kills when I've been going in between uh, red deer zones and shooting red deer. And this is actually the third level three row deer that has popped up from doing this. And as you can see, he there stops giving me a perfect broadside opportunity and he goes down straight away from that shot. Big patch of vital blood and some seriously huge antlers on this guy. That is a really good looking buck. And picking him up, he is a diamond at 85.70, which makes him my biggest diamond row deer ever. That is a seriously awesome buck. He is absolutely huge. I was so thrilled to get this as like a bonus trophy whilst on the red deer grind. Because of course I'm not like actively grinding row deer. As I said, it's their opportunistic kills as and when I see one that looks decent. I'll just take it out if there's no red deer in the area. And to have three level threes pop up just from doing this and this guy to be one of them, I was absolutely thrilled. But moving on to the red deer portion of this video now, which is going to be the rest of this video. And as I was coming across to this zone here, I noticed that one of the stags looked a little bit different. And as he turns to face us there, you can see that that is a piebald level six stag. Now, I have had a couple of other piebalds pop up since the last video I did, but this guy is by far the nicest one that has actually popped up. Now, you can see that there is another level 6 stag there. So what I tried to do was slot a shot in just between his spine and his shoulder blade into the lung, and then take out the second level 6 stag. However, the first shot that I actually took on the piebald didn't actually quite pay off. However, I got very lucky because he did this thing where he sort of stopped and turned right there. And that meant that I could get a secondary shot into him, which was a vital hit that brought him down instantly. And you can see my shot was just too far to the centre of his back and didn't quite get in between the shoulder blade and the spine and go it through into the lung. But that second shot was a solid double lung shot. He is only a small little silver, so probably not one I'm going to keep for the lodge. But it's always nice to see the rares turning up. And speaking of it being nice to see rares turning up, I came across to this zone after shooting some red deer around the rest of the lake. And as I came over that little hill there, I could just see over the brow a level 6 albino red stag. Now, this is actually the first albino I've had turn up on this entire grind, and it was really refreshing to see something other than a piebald for the rares. And I was actually really, really excited to see this guy, even though he is only a small little level 6. And seeing as he is only a level 6, and he is uneven, he actually really doesn't look that bad. And so I decided, as long as I could make a decent shot on him, that I would actually keep him, even if he only goes into a secondary lodge or something like that, he's still a really nice looking animal and I am just a sucker for the albino red deer. They look absolutely beautiful. And you can see he didn't go very far before he actually fell over from that shot and landed on the, uh, the sort of shoreline here of the lake. Absolutely gorgeous looking animal. But let's pick him up and see what he scores. He is a 166.40 scoring silver albino. And as I said, those antlers are mismatched in terms of they're not the same rack. 
but they honestly don't look too bad that is definitely something that could happen in real life and that is still an absolutely beautiful looking animal as i've mentioned before the albino red deer are one of my favorite rares in this entire game they just look so nice and so clean and when you see them they really stand out compared to what a normal red deer looks like that is still a really awesome harvest and one that I was definitely happy to see on this grind. But moving on from the rares and onto the legendary section of this video. I actually haven't had that many rares turning up in the past couple of days, but I have had a lot of level 9 showing up, which has been really encouraging and hopefully is a good sign that I am still doing, doing everything right and that hopefully eventually a great one will show itself. But as you can see, I was just trying to spot all of the red deer in this zone and as I moved around the lake a little bit, I spotted the level 9. That is a really big looking stag, but he's only 221 to 267 on his estimate. And looking at him, I was pretty sure that that was the smaller version of the big rack. So there was no guarantee that this guy would even make diamond, but even though he looks absolutely huge. Like that just, to me, there's no way that that shouldn't be a diamond. It just looks massive, but they can troll. I have seen it a couple of times. But eventually, once he picks his head up, I managed to get a nice frontal lung shot on him and he really doesn't go very far before he actually falls over. And looking at him on the ground, that is definitely the smaller version of the big rack, but that is still a really awesome looking stag. And he landed in quite a picturesque place as well with that background. So I just took a moment just to look at him there as he was led. And actually picking him up, he is a 251.60. So he really is only just over diamond, which is crazy when he looks this big. Honestly, I don't know why this rack doesn't score higher because that is a seriously big red deer. And you can see it took him out with the 303, which is still what I'm using for grinding, even though it seems that all suspicion that the M1 might have been causing some some issues has kind of shifted now. I've been sticking with the 303 just because I feel like it knocks them down a little bit faster. Um, when it's not a legendary or something big or a rare, I will use the 300 just to get them down quicker. But of course, when it is a level 9, I will use that 303 so that I pass the ethical um, ethical ammo check. And yeah, to me, that that's crazy that that is only just a diamond at 251.6. But a diamond is a diamond. That is another one on, on the... Uh, on the tally for the Great One grind, and moving straight on, we're at this lake again, and once again we have another legendary that has popped up here. But instead of being a guaranteed troll, this one I was pretty confident would actually make diamonds. Now I have actually been trolled by this particular rack in the past, but on this particular grind, every single one I have had with this rack has actually made diamonds. So that's why I was pretty confident that this guy would also just seemingly fo following that trend. End. Unfortunately, he didn't land great at all for any kind of pictures. But let's pick him up and he is a 253.30 diamond. So this guy is actually bigger than the small version of the big rack that was in the previous clip. Which to me is crazy. Like, in my head, this should be like the smallest diamond rack possible. And then you've got the smaller big rack and then the very big big rack. But sometimes this rack scores higher, which I just find absolutely bizarre. But that's just how the red deer scoring works at the moment. But that is still another legendary, still another one that made diamond, and again, another one to add to that tally of diamonds on this grind. So another really encouraging one to see. Moving on now to another level 9. And this guy was actually in one of my more unusual zones. Normally I run all of the deer out of this zone and take shots at them while they are fleeing. But thankfully I actually managed to come over the hill and spot them all before I sent them running and I spotted the big rack 9 legendary that was amongst them. Now this guy actually does have the biggest rack style for the legendary red deer and thankfully after he went alert he walked around, went back to calm and gave me a beautiful broadside shot and as you can see he really didn't go far from that before he actually went down. But as I said, this is the biggest rack style for Diamond Red Deer. So I was hopeful that he could score pretty highly. And fingers crossed, he was a 265.40. But not only does he have a really good score, he is actually max weight at 240 kgs. Which to me, 
is just ultra encouraging. On my whitetail Great One grinds, I had at least one max weight per grind before the Great One showed up. Now, I know that it has no relevance and that it's all RNG as to when a Great One shows up, but just seeing as that as that's how it worked with my whitetail, to me this just felt just so encouraging because it shows that I am getting the stags to be really big through what I'm doing. I'm getting these diamonds and now not only am I getting diamonds, I'm getting heavyweight diamonds, which yeah, it just feels extra encouraging. I don't know how else to say it, but that is a very, very awesome stag and 265.40 is not a bad score. So definitely one that I was incredibly happy to get. And now on to sort of the last half of this video. I basically finally decided what I want to take my Great One Red Deer out with if one ever does actually show up. And you can see on screen, once again, we are looking at another small rack nine legendary Red Deer. And basically I decided that the weapon and ammo I'd like to take my Great One out with if I do get one to show up is the 243 with soft points. Now, I have had people tell me that I'm absolutely crazy already for making this decision, but I decided that the best way to actually test it out and see how comfortable I was with it would be actually to try it out on some diamond red deer. Now, you can see that I have the 243 equipped and I do actually have soft points loaded into this gun. So I decided that what I was going to do was just try and get a nice broadside shot on this guy. I had already taken a couple of practice shots on much smaller stags and found that broadside was definitely the way to go in terms of trying to get a good shot. Now, of course, the soft points really lack in penetration and the 243 is a very underpowered caliber for these red deer. So you really do want a perfect broadside shot before you can really think about taking any kind of shot. And you can see this guy actually went to alarmed before he decided that he was going to turn and give me give me that shot that I was looking for. And right there, as he turned, he slows down again and gives me that shot that I'm looking for. And he goes away. I lose sight of him in the scope, but I saw his health dropping. And I did actually find vital blood, so I knew that I'd actually made the shot on this guy. And with that, this is the first diamond with the 243 soft points that I've ever shot for Red Deer. That is a 251.60 scoring stag. And yeah, a really good practice one because I'm not the biggest fan of this particular rack style for the diamond Red Deer. So if I had messed it up, I wouldn't have been too upset. But you can see, I kept that shot nice and far back so it wouldn't hit any of the leg bones and actually got through to the lung and liver. So that was actually a really impressive shot for the 243 with those soft points in my eyes and definitely encouraged me to keep trying and see what else I could do with it. Because of course I want as much practice as possible before if ever trying this on a great one. And I really wanted to try and take a big rack diamond red deer with the 243 soft points because this is basically as close to a great one as I can get without it being a great one. And after a few more hours of grinding, I found this guy. That is a big rack nine legendary with an estimate of 240 to 286. And he is a big boy. That is definitely a diamond as long as I can make the shot. Now, unfortunately, I did actually spook him out of his zone where he was drinking, but thankfully he actually came back at the perfect angle for me to be able to get the shot that I was looking for. And this guy is a really big looking stag. I was really hopeful that this guy would be high scoring. And you can see he trots to within very, very close, then slows down to a walking pace. And I keep that shot far enough forward that as he takes that step, it gets through into the back of the lung and into the liver. And you can see the vital blood through the scope he really doesn't go far from that shot and you can see yeah right lung and liver exactly where i wanted it 266.40 scoring diamond red deer now this guy is actually bigger than the max weight stag i shot because uh, he's only 237.19 kgs but he scores significantly bigger so this is actually a really cool one to test this on and i was really pleased that i actually managed to bag him with the 243 Moving on to the next legendary in this video now, and once again we are looking at a small rack legendary red deer. This guy gave me so much hassle. I spent so long trying to get him to give me a broadside shot, and he really just would not comply. Eventually he ended up spooking off, 
and I ended up making a decision that I was going to do one of two things. I was going to try and take a front-on shot on this guy to kind of show why I won't take a front-on shot on the great one and for my own peace of mind to test why the front-on shots are so bad. He is a small rack legendary and as I've mentioned I'm not particularly keen on this particular rack so if I ended up me messing it up I wouldn't be too devastated i wouldn't be happy but i wouldn't be absolutely gutted but the one comment that i got so much when i posted um videos of when i tried this on a great one whitetail is why would i not shoot it front on and i wanted to take this opportunity basically to show everyone in a video why i will not risk a front on shot on a great one with a setup this week whether it's a white tail or a red deer because it's basically the same it ended up being the same when i tested it on white tail and it's basically the same when i tested it on this red deer so you can see i finally took a shot on him and it was front on right as he was going alert and you can see he's running off and his health isn't dropping now thankfully his health just wasn't going down at all so I had more than enough opportunity to try and get a second shot into him. Thankfully eventually he came back you can see he's nervous and he hasn't lost any health from that front on shot at all with the 243. So I was trying to get him to walk along the sort of basically along the edge of the lake there hoping that he would go broadside eventually but he kept turning to come straight towards me again and I was not going to risk taking another front on shot. I think the, the point was made on why I don't want to take a front on shot on any potential great one just by that first shot. But this guy just kept coming closer and closer. And I was thinking, surely at some point he's got to notice me and panic and is going to go straight to fleeing. And you can see it just how close he is. He's filling up the entire scope and he goes nervous, alert, alarmed and goes fleeing. But they do a sort of thing where they almost prepare to flee. And as he did that, he gave me a angle to actually get through into a lung. So that second shot was a vital hit. And he's running around a little bit here. But he doesn't actually take too long before he goes down. He ended up running under the water there, which was weird. But thankfully, he actually landed up here on the ground. And I was so relieved to see this guy down. It took so long to get that vital hit on him. And as you can see, that first hit just didn't penetrate even close to where it needed to be. But the second shot got through to the lung. With their necks being the way it is and how much flesh there is between the neck and the lungs and heart, there's just no point in risking that front on shot on a great one. You can just see there's not enough penetration there. But the broadside lung shot is the way to go. So that is why on a great one red deer, if I get lucky enough to find one, I will be taking a broadside shot at the lungs with the 243 soft points. Now moving on to another legendary and I found this guy at one of my lakes. That is a 255 minimum estimate big rack legendary red deer. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to see this guy. That is one of the best estimates I've ever seen on a red deer, up to 301. Now, I've mentioned before, it's rare to see a red deer break 270. So that top estimate is way over what this guy was going to potentially score. But seeing an estimate that high is always encouraging. And I've always wanted a 270 plus diamond red deer. Purely because a 270 red deer in the Hunter Classic is a big thing. So I wanted to get one in the Call of the Wild. Now, of course, I did spook this guy off. But thankfully, he actually went alert. And it gave me just a beautiful broadside shot. Again, I kept that shot nice and far back from his leg. And he's running away and his health starts dropping. And... I noticed that this guy was wider than any red deer I've ever seen in this game. That is such a, like a wide rack. So I was crossing my fingers as I picked him up and then I saw that score. 270.10. That is a gargantuan stag. Oh my gosh. Diamond stag of my dreams. I have wanted a 270 for so long. And it is so rare to get one that breaks that 270 mark. 
I am absolutely thrilled. And I shot him with the 243 soft points at 74 meters and managed to get through to a lung. How cool is that? That, this just completely solidified in my mind that that is what I'm going to shoot my great one with. But just what a stag. This is honestly, I am so thrilled to have gotten this guy from my grind. You can't even fit his rack in this screen. It is just so wide. Like, I just couldn't believe it. And I accidentally flipped him upside down there. I was trying to get screenshots and post it and share it to people because I have always wanted a 270. Oh my gosh, what a beast. Absolutely awesome. Like, you just can't get his rack in full anywhere. He's just too big and too wide. And you can see that inner spread is 52.35, which is just huge. What a beast. And you can see plenty of penetration into that lung there. Not a problem at all. And I intend to get the great one even closer than that. I want it to be like 20 meters away before we take that shot. But my gosh, what a stag. What an encouraging thing to find and a main trophy lodge addition for sure. But that is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.